Talking about explosive uh, plays, well, we had a bunch of them in Chapel Hill yesterday, and North Carolina beat Wake Forest 58-55. to Wake was banged up on defense. Not an excuse. I didn't think they would be this bad, but whew, the offense made just insanely uncharacteristic mistakes for Wake Forest. I mean, just just ridiculous. Two turnovers led directly to 14 North Carolina points. This was a non-conference game, in case you didn't hear the thousand times that the broadcast said it, along with uh, everybody else on the planet, so I will announce it as well. Yeah, it was a non-conference game. These are two teams in the same state, in the same conference, that only get to play like every seven years, So uh, because of the, the divisional stuff. And so they decided they were going to play in the non-conference. Cheers to them for doing it. Cheers to Wake Forest for actually doing this, right? Because a, a non-conference game on the road in November against a formidable opponent is typically not a smart idea. But cheers to Wake Forest for doing it. You know, uh, this was uh, this was crazy. So I, I do think that this means there will be no ACC team in the playoff this year. I think we already knew that, but this just confirms it. And North Carolina, 330 rushing yards. I mean, they were. They were unbelievable. Ty Chandler, 22 carries, 213 yards rushing, four touchdowns. Sam Howell. Four touchdowns. Jesus. Yeah. Sam Howell ran the ball 50, or sorry, 21 times for 104 yards with two touchdowns. Sam Howell only threw the football 26 times, completed 16 of them for 216 yards and one touchdown. I, I mean, Wake Forest still outgained them, like 615 to 546. Uh, both teams had. Insane penalties, like 11 penalties for both teams. North Carolina had 118 penalty yards, and Wake Forest had 119. This was a chippy game. There were players that did not like each other, obviously, on the field. I mean, you look, the turnovers were the difference in the ball game here. Like, you you had two of them for Wake Forest that led directly to 14 points for North Carolina, and North Carolina had one that led to three points for Wake Forest. Wake Forest was up by 18 at one point. They were up by 14 in the fourth quarter, and North Carolina outscored them 24 to nothing at one point until they gave up a late touchdown with 40 seconds left. This was an incredible watch. I I don't always like the 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 ping pong right on grass. I don't always like the back and forth, but this was entertaining. Like I I can't say that scoring is not entertaining. Like it's it definitely is, but this was. This was nuts, and it really kind of came down to, uh, you know, who could put the ball in the end zone more times, which I, I guess every game does. But you knew there were going to be a lot of points scored here, and yeah, I I don't know what to make of it. Don't know what to make of it. you in North Carolina, by the way. I don't know how many teams can say this, but they are a top ten team that has a loss to an unranked team, and they are also now an unranked team that has a win over a top ten team. So <laughs> in the same season, hey, give me give me your thoughts here because this was this was bonkers. I thought it was going to be a great game. I knew it was going to be a wild game, and I just thought Wake Forest was going to make sure they found a way to win it. I didn't think when North Carolina needed to get a stop, they were going to be able to get a stop, and they did. And that that was just the way the game happened. I, I knew it was going to be high scoring. I knew it was going to be wild. I knew it was going to be crazy. I took Wake Forest. I took Wake Forest in the points. Took Wake Forest on the money line. I I you know. This game, this game broke me. This game hurt me. So same here. Early, same um, here. But uh, but but it was. I mean, it was everything it was billed to be, which was high scoring, wild and crazy. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree. We'll move off that. Let's jump into the comments for a second. Cam Harrison said BYU eight and two. Georgia Southern next game. Last game is at USC. Yeah, uh, BYU could certainly be ten and two. At one point, we were talking about them being undefeated, but they could also lose to USC. They could also lose to Georgia Southern. Like it's not out of the realm of possibilities. So BYU is uh, not losing to USC. USC is a dead ass football team that has quit. It kind of looked like it last night against Arizona. That State. dead cat ain't bouncing. Now you you probably well I think they I think they already had it right <laughs> early in the season. Gary Lewis said bummed Fresno State lost, but uh, twenty one Bulldogs D is trash. They definitely look like that against Boise. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. BYU could win out from Double O'Neill. Yep, it, very possible. Only got two of them to go. So Seth Garcia said uh, UTSA. Uh, they are nine and zero. Does the CFP rank? I think so this week. I think they do this week after Fresno State got got bounced the way that they did uh, because you can't toss Boise in there. Boise's already got four losses. Double O'Neill can't believe the Tar Heels beat Wake. Only game they can win is to knock off an undefeated. That kind of sucks. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not been a great year for Mac Brown and them. I still 
think that it is entirely possible that Mac retires this season, maybe next. He just, even yesterday, it didn't look like he was having fun. It looks like he has aged significantly since the beginning of the COVID season. Um, I just don't know. I don't know if he wants to do it, but I, that's that's just me brainstorming here. Double O'Neill said, yes, UTSA gets ranked. And Seth wants to know if they can make a New Year's Six Bowl. Chris, you think uh, you think the Roadrunners, you know, meet me, can, can make a New Year's Six? I think they're going to keep them away from that. I really do. I think somebody else above them is going to be ranked and stay ranked from the G5. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're probably right. Tell you this, it's going to be in Cincinnati is what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. Cincinnati's going to get that G5 spot because they're not letting them in. They're not going to let them in the playoff. There's not enough significant wins anymore. SMU losing to Memphis yesterday certainly hurt that. Elvin jumped in. People can take shots all they want, but we will still be Alabama, and your team still won't measure up, and Georgia should remember who daddy is before popping off at the mouth. Elvin, I don't know that this is uh, a good time to be talking about how good Alabama is. Yes, historically, yes, this season, probably not so much. uh, Because Alabama, I, I am an Alabama fan. I have Alabama tattoos. They ain't good this year, period. Like, they may be 8-1, and one, but they ain't good. Uh, Gary Lewis, I like Kiffin, but should have rooted for Liberty to win if we have to endure SEC fatigue, though. Better Ole Miss or A&M than Georgia-Alabama. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're going to get A&M in, in Georgia, and I think that'll be a fun matchup. Seth uh, should record if they went out, uh, but I doubt if the committee is rigged. Talking about UTSA. Uh, Gary Lewis said 21 SMU. What the hell? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what to make of SMU. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.